Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Annie and today I'm going to be talking about the best books that I read in 2023. Now, 2023 was actually not the best reading year. I have a lot of books on this list that I didn't actually give five stars. I actually I didn't give very many five stars and there are some five stars I gave initially that I'm not as excited about anymore. Um, so I decided not to include them on the list. And I don't know, I feel like it was just overall very like mid year for me, mid to bad. <laughs> um, but here's hoping that 2024 will be better. Um, with that being said, I did really enjoy all the books on this list and yeah, let's get into them. I'm actually going to start with the one manga I have on this list, and that is Monster by Naoki Urasawa. I think I'm saying that right. Um, I actually started reading manga for the first time this year. I read a bit of Hell's Paradise, I think the first six volumes of that, and started off really liking it, but then got a bit bored, and then I was a bit hesitant to try it again, but in the past couple weeks, I started the Monster series. This is volume three um, of the Perfect Edition, and I love it. This is what I was wanting from manga. I was kind of like, I don't know, I was kind of wondering if maybe manga is not the genre for me. With Hell's Paradise, I kind of felt um, like the character development wasn't the best, and I read four characters usually. Um, but with this, it is like a mystery and it's very character driven and it's like a psychological, there's a psychological element to it. Anyway, I'm just gonna <laughs> tell you what it's about. So Monster is the story of this guy named Dr. Tenma and he is a surgeon at this hospital. Um, he is dating the like hospital director's daughter he is letting the hospital director take advantage of him because he's writing papers that the director then just passes off as, as his own. Um, so he's worked his way up to a pretty prestigious position in this hospital, but he's having to sacrifice a lot of his morals. And what happens is there is a important person that needs surgery, but there was another person that needed a different, more drastic surgery um that came in first and dr tenma decides to treat that patient instead of the more important person who the hospital director wants him to operate on this has happened several times where tenma is told to treat someone that's a bit high profile as opposed to treating like a civilian that came in first i'm sorry about this lighting i hope I hope it's okay. There's just lots of sun. So that one decision makes his girlfriend break up with him. He is demoted from, I think, like chief of surgery and he loses all power at the hospital. Um, and then he, there's also this set of twins that comes into the hospital. Tenma has been caring for them. And then one day, all of... There are these three guys, the hospital director, and then these two other surgeons that have been rude to Tenma and are like very much on the director's side. And one day these twins disappear and all three of those men are found dead. And Tenma is kind of blamed for it. And the story goes from there. He's suspected, but he's not like brought in or anything. Um, and it's, it's wild. It's so good. Um, Tenma is an incredible character with really sound morals, but he's also having to question his morals when he finds out that there's a string of murders going on and he is determined to stop the killer, which is our main kind of um, plot line throughout the series so far. The side characters are really great. They feel fleshed out. Um, the plot keeps you guessing. There's lots of twists and turns and it's just fantastic. And I was very uncertain about the manga kind of genre. Would you call it a genre? I don't know. The manga like form of storytelling. And I wasn't sure if it was for me, but this is 
changing my mind. I am devouring these. So I'm really excited to keep reading them. Um, but yeah, five stars to manga, to manga, to monster one and two. And this one is already intriguing me. So the first novel that I have to talk about is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. This is amazing. I read it at the very beginning of 2023 and I still think about it from time to time. I think A Little Life, the way that characters are written in A Little Life and the way that it um, almost feels like a movie where like this tiniest little action can produce a really big emotional impact. Um, I think that's very similar to the vibes that I get in Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and the writing and the character work. Um, and while I really didn't like a lot of things about A Little Life, I think, um, yeah, for me there's some sort of weird comparison I make with the two of them and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow kind of does things right that I wanted A Little Life to do. So in Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, um, Sadie and Sam meet at a hospital when they're quite young. I think like middle school sort of age. Um, Sam is there because he was in a car accident and I think he lost some mobility in his legs and Sadie is there because her mother is passing away from, I believe, cancer. Um, so obviously this is a very hard time for both of them, but they bond over playing, um, a game in this little arcade room that the hospital has. And, um, Sam actually hadn't spoken to anyone in days. I think his mother passed in the car accident he was in, leaving him orphaned. And, um... He hasn't spoken to anyone, but he speaks to Sadie and they form this friendship that lasts the whole length of the book. I mean, obviously like their whole lives and the book spans years, goes into adulthood with the two of them and their careers. Um, so yeah, Sadie and Sam bond over their love of gaming and they actually grow up to become game developers. They start this company together and they develop a very famous game that takes off and then it follows them through you know various like falling outs that they have they communicate to each other sometimes through the games that they each make which i think is it was very clever and it was a very kind of emotionally impactful way to see the two of them communicating because maybe there'd be one point where they weren't speaking but sam has put out a new game and sadie's like oh, well i have to play it because like it's Sam's game and she sees something in there that no one else would get but it's kind of like a specific message to her and it's just so sweet and I just oh my god their friendship is like everything I'm getting emotional about it but it is incredible and I really like it made me feel really nostalgic I thought it was so interesting seeing kind of like the different stages of life that they go through as reflected in these games that they're making um and it made me just want to curl up and play Stardew Valley because there's one game that I think Sadie makes that really reminds me of it and I love that game I would say you don't have to be a gamer to enjoy this book but if you are a gamer you'll enjoy it even more so that was really fun and obviously it's a very well beloved book so I'm not the only one that loves it but that's tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. The next book I have to talk about is Assembly by Natasha Brown. This book is incredible. It's actually kind of funny because right now I'm writing an essay on it. I have read it twice this year. The first time was in April and then I just read it again in November for a class I was taking at school. Um, so that's really interesting and then obviously that's why I'm writing my essay about it but it is tiny. It's 100 pages. Obviously you can see I've folded down all the pages that I have like quotes on and there's many. Um, so this is a very interesting book because the author Natasha Brown has worked in finance as a black British woman in London and the nameless main character in this book also works in finance in London as a black British woman. Um, so you could say it's sort of auto-fictional. So our main character is really struggling. She's feeling very fatigued um, by this life 
that she lives in London. Okay, sorry if the angles changed a little bit. I keep trying to find a way to avoid this light, but it's not really working. So we're just gonna go with it. But um, anyway, our main character is feeling hopeless, I would say. Um, she has done everything that she feels she was supposed to do. She went to an Oxbridge uni. She has a really high paying job. She has a long-term relationship going on with this white guy. Um, and you know, she just got a promotion at work, but she feels this crushing pressure to assimilate and to conform and she feels like she has no sort of agency. Um, and she speaks at these assemblies to younger women of color um, and tells them basically, you know, how she got her job in finance and that you can do it too and all this stuff. And she just feels like she is not doing right by these children because she knows that no matter what you do, you will never be seen as a British person. Um, you'll never be seen as maybe a, a human being in the eyes of many people in the UK. And this is interesting to me, especially because I live in the UK. I'm not from there, but I do live there. I go to school there. I think specifically being British, you're in one of the homes of colonialism and she has discussions on colonialism in here. She covers so much. She has discussions on intersectional feminism, um, postmodernism, postcolonialism, decolonization, um, all sorts of things, but it's just, it's a very sad read. It's very well done. It's, um, it's very well edited, obviously, because it's so short. Every single sentence packs a punch. It should win a bunch of awards. It got shortlisted for three awards, but it didn't win any. And it should have because it's amazing. Um, you should read it. It'll take a couple hours. It's definitely not a light read by any means, but I think it's a really important one. It was published in 2021, and I feel like this is a very sort of it's a novel that is very current and I don't know if I feel like I can't say anything about this well enough but you have to read this like it's amazing okay sorry for the change um I just the light over there was not working for me this is not as cute of a background but hey it is what we've got to work with so anyway the next book that so one of my favorites this year was Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. So Legendborn, the first book in this series called, I think the Legendborn Cycle, is about this girl named Brie, who I'm obsessed with. Like she is, she is like the young adult heroine of the 2020s, in my opinion. Um, so she gets accepted into this early college program at I think North Carolina University um, and this was a program that her mom went to. She lost her mom recently at the beginning of the book of the first book um, and it's just her and her dad. Her dad really doesn't want her to go and I think her mom didn't either but she does it because she feels like She'll feel closer to her mom. Her best friend's going. She's really excited about it. On her first day there, she sees a demon that a, another kid at the uni is fighting. And then she finds out about this whole order um, that is kind of underground. And it has to do with Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. It's a kind of complex system that's really interesting to learn about. Um, but Brie is something different. She can see these demons, which means that she has the sight um, and means that naturally she might be like taken to the fold of the order, but she's black and the order is all white. It is a white um, old fashioned place. 
in the south. She doesn't get the most warm welcome when the scion of Arthur himself um, decides to take her under his wing as his like apprentice for these trials. And she, I don't know, it's, there's a lot going on, but she discovers maybe that there's other ancestral root magic, which is more on the African American side of her family. The second book, I can't say too much about plot wise. However, I got to see a lot more of a character that I really, really love. And it was, it didn't disappoint in terms of my expectations for the sequel. I had such a fun time reading it. I think I've said this before, but if I was like 13, 14, this would be like my Percy Jackson. Like, and I am so in love with it, but you know the way that you are when you're a teenager. Like, I wish I had had that, these books like growing up, um, but they're amazing. And yeah, that is Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. Next up, we have A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn. This is actually the third book in this series, but I did um, read this whole series this year up until the third book. This is my new personality. <laughs> like, I'm obsessed. I've talked about this so much on my channel already and I will never stop. So this is a story about Veronica Speedwell and in the first book, A Curious Beginning, she is living in the 1800s in England and her aunts have just died. They're the people that have cared for her like her whole life. Oh, also she is a lepidopterist, so she catches butterflies and studies them. So on her way back from one of her aunt's funerals, she discovers that her house has been broken into and she investigates this and is almost kidnapped by the guy that was you know rummaging through her house and then she's almost taken captive by this guy but this other guy the baron um comes and saves her and is like hey come with me to london you are in grave danger you're more important than you realize and i need to protect you and she's sort of like she doesn't think she's anything special she's just like i am just a girl trying to do girly things and just let me go, like, yeah, I'll go to London with you, but it's only because I had to go there anyway to secure passage to like go on a butterfly hunting expedition. Um, she didn't tell him that, but she's just sort of like, yeah, I'll go along with his plan for a little bit. They get to London, the Baron drops her off at this guy Stoker's house. He's like, stay with Stoker, he will protect you and I'll be back in a little bit. But he doesn't come back because he actually dies. Stoker is blamed for the Baron's death. And Stoker's sort of like, look, you were put into my care. That was like the last thing the Baron did before he died. So I'm going to protect you. And I feel like somehow you are important. Like, let's investigate why this is. And let's also try to clear my name because I'm accused for murder. So that's what they do. That is the first book. And the thing that's so amazing about these books are not only the mysteries. I think the mysteries are really fun, but they're kind of secondary to... The characters um every single character in these books is interesting quirky in some way um nuanced developed the two main characters though are what sell it veronica and stoker are my favorite characters i've read maybe ever the relationship between them is very slow burn very will they won't they they see each other as their equal and someone that is even maybe like their twin flame in a sense of like they care about the same things they're knowledgeable about the same things stoker is a natural historian and a taxidermist um they read all each other's work like they see each other as kindred spirits and their friendship is fierce and protective and wonderful and the romance side is like, please, 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 they have to get together. And I know that they will, cause why, like, they have to. <laughs> um, but it's just so amazing. Next, a book that is very different in tone from the Veronica Speedwell series, and that is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. 
This is the story of a girl who is groomed by her English teacher and it's a dual timeline. So we see back in her school days when she was like, I think 14, 15, 16, um, and is being groomed. And then we see in the present day during the Me Too movement and a few other girls are coming forward and accusing this guy of grooming and sexual harassment. Um, and they ask our main character if she wants to help and she says no. And she warns the guy and she still like talks on the phone with him. They still kind of have a relationship and she still doesn't think that she was ever abused by him. SA, rape, grooming, um, any of those things are very hard to come to terms with in a personal sense. It's not always an easy like, yeah, this happened to me. Like it takes a while to accept what happened. And for our main character, I think it's really realistic that even at this point in her life when she is, I, I think late 20s, 30s, she is still kind of under this spell because the alternative um, that he's actually a predator is too much for her to face. She feels like he's like her great love, um, all this stuff. And so I think it was a really bold, but a really good choice for Kate Elizabeth Russell to have our main character be kind of dealing with things in the present the way that she is. And I also think, no spoilers, but the ending I felt was perfect. And the point where our main character gets to in the present day by the end of the novel, I think it it made me cry. It was so good. Another thing that is amazing about this novel is how well it was handled. Obviously this deals with really sensitive no uh, topics. Look up trigger warnings. The abuse was never romanticized in any way and I really appreciated that. I think that can be really hard to juggle when you're talking about a 16 year old that's looking at her professor as the first love of her life. Like that, obviously she's romanticizing him, but the book doesn't. Um, and I think that's a really hard, like hard balance to strike and she does it perfectly. Definitely one of the best books I've read in the past couple years. It's amazing, it's really emotional. And I wanna own a copy, I don't have a copy, but I want one. Next up is a series that is a reread and normally I wouldn't count rereads in my best books of the year, but it has been a long time since I've read these books. Um, and that is the Hunger Games series by Suzanne Collins. I am not going to talk about these because I have a whole video coming out about these books. So keep your eyes peeled for that. You know when books just kind of bring back your love for reading and remind you why you love reading in the first place? Like that is these books. So I just kind of had to mention them. Next up is My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. This is the first Samantha Downing book I've read and I really want to get to more. Usually I don't give thrillers five stars. I feel like it's very like middle of the road genre for me it's usually three maybe four if it's really good um but I just had so much fun reading this I went into this knowing nothing which was actually perfect I would suggest it so I'm not gonna say too much so this book is about this couple um they're married they have two kids they have um a hobby <laughs> and that hobby is um kidnapping women and killing them and it goes into that. I really don't want to say much more because I had so much fun going in blind and the first chapter I think really shocks you so I'm not gonna talk about it but what I really liked was it just kind of kept me guessing. I don't want to say anything that would spoil it. <laughs> um, I it's told from the man's perspective, the husband in this relationship. It's this very interesting thing where you don't want to root for him because what they're doing is horrible. But then sometimes you're like, I kind of, I kind of do root for him a little bit. And like sometimes he's a good dad, but their kids know nothing. Like it is crazy. I, yeah, I don't really know what I can say without spoiling it, but you should read it. And then we can talk about it. Next up, I actually have a classic. I don't have any other classics on this list and usually 
I'm not like I do like classics but I'm it's hard to read them and everyone knows like kind of how it's difficult to read a classic but I did read Persuasion for school and I loved it this is my first Jane Austen which is it makes me feel like a fraud <laughs> like I am three years into my degree and um I study English lit and I have not read Jane Austen it feels wrong but now I have so that's great and this book incredible i did also write an essay on this one recently so it is kind of fresh in my mind this is the story of Anne elliot she is from a family that really values honorifics and her dad is a baronet and he is like obsessed with that and so is her older sister elizabeth her younger sister mary i think mary um is married Mary is married and Anne is kind of like the forgotten sibling she doesn't have anything that kind of is going on for her she actually experienced a heartbreak seven years ago she was in love with this guy named Wentworth and he proposed and she was persuaded to say no by her good friend um Lady Russell it was sort of like a placement mother figure for her because her mother passed. Um, Lady Russell usually gives quite good advice, but in this case, she might have been mistaken. But anyway, Anne was persuaded to say no. He left for the Navy. In the present day of this novel, um, the Elliot family is going a little bit bankrupt and they're struggling because of their lavish lifestyle and they're not really bringing in much income. So they decide to let out their house and go live in Bath and they rent their house to captain wentworth's sister and her husband and this also brings captain wentworth back into anne's life it takes place in bath um and in somerset in general which is where i live in the uk which is really cool it's brilliant i've heard it's very different in tone from a lot of her other novels there's not much speech in it um from our main character actually in the first half of the book she i don't think speaks more than a couple words like it's really really minimal there is very minimal um contact and in-person sort of communication with Anne and Wentworth which is a difficult thing to pull off while having that be your main storyline is their romance and somehow she did it and made me root for them and made me feel like they actually were a really good match if you're looking for the sort of like Darcy hand clench tension read this book like it is full of little moments like he's like he will like help her into a carriage and you're like oh my god that is the biggest thing that's happened between them since seven years ago like it's crazy I was like kicking my little feet I was so excited and the letter um obviously I don't know if like do I spoil a Jane Austen book like can you but there's this letter at the end that is the most beautiful thing I've ever read and it made me cry so that's persuasion anyone who needs a good classic to read i think you could pick this up it's relatively short it is pretty easy to read i would say and it's a nice it's just like it's lovely and i really loved Anne. she's very contemplative the book as a whole is very contemplative and um kind of meandering but in a really nice way um it has a quiet sort of thoughtful feel to it which is really nice so that's persuasion um highly highly recommend on a completely different note we have boy parts by eliza clark i actually have a reading vlog where i read this book i will link it down below this book is really good i'm a lover of unhinged women fiction and this is definitely it's in that category for sure <laughs> so okay boy parts follows this girl she is living in newcastle and she is an erotic photographer so she takes pictures of these very like average looking men um in various situations and poses and uploads them to a website online where people can order prints and stuff and she also works at a bar 
that's like her day job but she gets this offer to do an art show in this prestigious gallery in london and the novel builds up to the art show as our main character just goes off the rails off the rails um she is losing it by the end and i enjoyed every second of it i think this novel is really really interesting it says a lot about female rage about the effects that trauma can have um especially when we're not willing to face our traumas and you know move on from things um i know i'm being a bit vague but it's just i don't want to say anything too specific about it again because it's like you just have to read it go on this little ride come back watch my vlog because i get into a lot of the i think deeper meanings behind it um and drop a comment and we can have a little little chat about it next we have um i think the only horror on this list i haven't read much horror in the past but i did read a few this year and my favorite was the last house on neva street by katrina ward this book is incredible it's really creepy i was super freaked out in the beginning part um but it's about this guy he lives in this house on needless street and he lives there with his daughter and his cat um but the thing about this man is he you can tell something's just not right with him he comes off very childlike um and doesn't thrive at all in social situations. He also has some creepy habits. You don't want to say that he's creepy or, you know, um, a freak or anything if he's actually disabled, but you can't really tell what's going on. So it's a bit conflicting as the reader, but there was this thing that happened where this girl went missing, um, maybe like 10 years ago at this lake that's kind of near his house and he was a suspect and the sister of the girl that went missing is looking for her sister believes that she's still alive and believes that our main character has something to do with it um this book takes a definite turn at i guess maybe the 80 percent mark in the novel um, which completely changes your whole view on everything that's happened before. I can't spoil it, but it's what makes this book five stars for me. And you need to experiment. You need to experience it for yourself. She creates a really like beautiful atmosphere. And although I kind of guessed one of the first twists, I felt like there was. I wasn't. I wasn't mad about it. So. That's the last house on Nila Street. Read it ASAP. You should, you should read it. So the last book I have on this list is Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Q. Sutanto. There was something so special to me about reading this book. I think the audio version of this book is supreme. I would, I read it on audio. I haven't tried reading it physically, but I would argue that the audio book narrator makes this book a whole experience the way that she speaks as Vera Wong is so funny and just kind of perfectly embodied in her character and I loved it this is a cozy mystery about a woman Vera Wong she runs this tea shop that doesn't get a lot of business and she's constantly calling her son who doesn't really want to talk to her and she's always talking about how like young people these days do this and this and this and they, you need to eat more and like just stuff like that um being you know a nice grandma and one day she comes down in the morning because she lives right above her tea shop she comes downstairs opens the door to her tea shop and sees a dead man on the floor now she calls the police the police come but they say oh you know he probably just like they don't say it's murder but she's like it's murder because she watches all these crime shows or something and she decides she's gonna take the investigation into her own hands because you know she can do it better than the police she makes friends with all of her suspects and the suspects make friends and it gets really messy and then you're just like they all have something to hide they're all forming these really cute friendships they're all kind of bonding with Vera Wong, especially over like all the food she makes them. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. You kind of wonder how is this all gonna play out? Cause one of these people 
presumably killed this guy and now they're all forming very close attachments it's um it's found family it is just it's beautiful it's it's heartwarming it's cozy i loved it um the characters are so sweet the tea shop setting is really sweet and cozy like i just it was like a warm hug i think when i really needed it i was listening to it at a time where i was feeling really lonely and it made me feel like loved i don't know do books ever do that for you like maybe that's just a new thing but i just loved it i think i read it at the first of time for me and it was amazing so those are all the books that are my favorites that i read in 2023 Here's hoping for more good reads in 2024. If you liked this video, give it a like and consider subscribing if you want. Um, if you watched to this point in the video, leave a cup of tea emoji. Do they have that? Or coffee if possible for a beer long. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.